you gonna tie your shoe yet? Tie it! Tie your shoe! Loopy loop that boo! And then your shoes are looking good! Double knot it! Double knot it! Double knot it! Double knot it! I swear, thank you for another incredible season. Absolutely. Thank you guys for visiting. Yes. Another incredible season out on Carnival. Uh, and we got a lot of things we gotta we gotta we gotta break down and talk about this year. First and foremost, um how was it like to be back on Carnival yet again for uh, another year? Uh, I mean, as always, I am a sucker for Carnival. Uh, I absolutely love clowning around. It was a little different vibe this year, just because I feel like we had a lot of rookies, but they all definitely pulled their own, and we were a very strong cast of clowns. And I always, as always, have a lot of fun being a clown. Well, it's it's a it's a it's a I mean it's a it's a banger of a great time. I got stuff all over me. This is awesome. <laughs> she said that's yeah well yeah that is what she said um michael scott uh no it it was a good year though because it was one of those years where um for us it just felt uh it felt like just normal to be back again and um the energy levels this year were just unreal um i think i can speak for both me and, me and, and sammy when we say that this was probably one of the best years we've had of haunt in just a long time period like, yeah, I, I, I agree. Mean, this year was, was definitely hype. Oh yeah, I mean, how was that to to, to 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 contribute to that? I mean, you already bring a lot of energy to the table as it is, but to have to contribute to that and 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 to be a part of that, how 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 awesome of an experience was that this year to bring help bring that chaos back to life to Carnival? Oh man, it was absolutely amazing. Um, I will live and die a clown. <laughs> <laughs> live and die a clown. <laughs> it's like it's like the goonies never say die right there you go exactly i uh, always keep clowning around i mean it was very special for you this year though because uh looking uh, there's something i want to talk about in specific and i want to hear your reactions about it i don't know if you've gotten the chance to really talk too much about it but um right after haunt season you went viral Oh yeah. <laughs> Big time. You went viral. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> you, you told a guest to tie their shoes in, in, in your in your voice and you were switching voices and whatnot and had a and had a, a hilarious interaction with this this uh this guest. And the next thing you know, I'm seeing it all over Instagram, I'm seeing it all over meme pages, I'm seeing it everywhere. You went viral literally overnight. Like what was that? What's that been like for you this month? Like, how's that been? Like, people like constantly, I'm hearing or quoting it, rewatching that, that whole thing. Even some people have gone as far to redo the video. Like, what's that like for you? Uh, it's kind of a surreal thing because, like, you know, last year I went somewhat viral only on TikTok for the uh, like the you bring treats video because I think that hit like eight point five million views, but this one fucking blew that one out of the water uh i have people or uh lad bible like unilad reached out to me personally and asked if they could take the video and like credit me the rights and i was like yeah go for it so i signed it off to them and then they blasted it all over the internet and you know people all over have been sending it to me people that i haven't talked to for years are like oh my god like i used to put, i went to high school with this chick and it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah like I'm, I'm still consistently getting tagged in it even now after han's been over for like what a good almost month pretty much yeah absolutely insane yeah it's been yeah. 28 days 23 days if i uh count my days correctly <laughs> and uh i i can't count so 
Um, but yeah, that's that that is completely wild. Um, and the the, the fact that it, I feel like it keeps growing traction, um, at least from what I've seen, because like it went big, and then like I still hear people continuing to talk about it, which is completely wild to me. Uh, that the the life of a viral video. <laughs> Yeah, um, actually, this this past weekend at Anime Pasadena, I was just walking around, you know, in my Quetzalcoatl cosplay, and then out of the corner of, like, earshot, we hear these people go, like, oh, have you heard about that one clown, Bobbins, about, like, the shoe-tying thing? And I was, like, <laughs> fucking way. And we all just, like, looked at each other, like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, wow. It was like, it was, like, you turn around and be, like, boom, I'm right there. <laughs> Yeah. Like boom, then, I'm right here, and then you just made someone's day right there. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, a couple days ago, you know, like I went to Walmart with Andrew, and then some person messaged me on Instagram. And they're like, "Hey, were you at this Walmart like 30 minutes ago?" And I was like, "Uh, yeah, I was." And they're like, "Oh my god, I saw you!" I was like, "Oh shit!" Like, oh, it's it's come to that. <laughs> Whereas That's so weird. Bonded and recognized. It's kind now of now you get now, now you got the celebrity status. You can't go anywhere. You need bodyguards twenty four seven. I just want to go outside. <laughs> yeah, you can't even go to you can't even go anywhere anymore. Now you're so viral now on the internet. It's just like you're gonna be stopped like every like ten minutes now. <laughs> every, like you're that dick. Oh God, make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna every time I like I think of someone like being recognized in per in person. I think about I don't know if either of you have seen Shrek. I think it's the fourth one, Forever After, or whatever. Mm-hmm. When he's like, "Daddy, tell him to do the roar." Do the roar. <laughs> do the yeah. roar. So I, if if I ever had something go viral, and like someone came up to me and it was like, or like up to you and was like, "Tell her about tying her shoes," I, I would be like, "So like, please don't, please stop, <laughs> yeah, please." Please, I cannot. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I mean, I I saw that clip, and mind you, it's a funny clip. It is. It's really funny. Thank you. It's, it's it's hilarious. I don't know. I don't know what's like. So tell us the the, the lead up to that. Like, what, what what was going through your headset going through that? Because I don't know. Have you talked much about it since it's gotten released into the world? Nope. <laughs> so this, is, this is the first exclusive then. It is. Congratulations! You get the clickbait. Clickbait. <laughs> You got the exclusive oh, wait, how to tie your fucking shoe. How to tie your shoe. No, talk to me about the. I know how you guys are on the, on the Carnival Streets. You guys, you know, you guys beat off each other's energies. You guys, you know, you guys kind of make it roll and try to entertain not only guests yourselves but your coworkers and whatnot. Like, what was the the process leading up to like doing that? I mean, and then not knowing whether or not it was going to go viral. Or not. Um, I mean, I was just doing my thing and like the video there's it's actually a two-part video so the video that's before that the one that went viral is uh i took that girl's shoe and did like the shoe foam thing right (laughs) and then i just you know threw it back at her and then scooted away and then 10 minutes later i come back up and she's still sitting on the freaking ground and that's where that video starts of me telling her how to tie her shoe and not leaving until she double knots the dang shoe. And then uh, the whole Hatsune Miku would think, would be proud thing is she was wearing a Hatsune Miku shirt. And like out of context, like that's just wacky. Like why, why would Hatsune Miku be proud that you double knotted your shoes? <laughs> just why not? You just saw the character and you're like, screw it, why not? Exactly. In the moment, it yeah. made sense. But out of the moment, it doesn't make a damn lick of sense. <laughs> but people love it. It, it. it worked. I mean, I I, I just saw um, someone I follow on Instagram was actually just at the park recently and just recreated the entire thing. Oh, um, and it had me just laughing because, like, you know, you, you look at it and you're just seeing how, how much this is spread and whatnot. And, and, like, that was the one thing about doing this interview that I was the most curious about was, like, is she, like, I wonder how she feels about it. I don't know. I, don't, I haven't seen her really talk about it. So, like, it'd be a fun opportunity to, to pick her brain about it, how, how she's taking it and how she thinks about it. I mean, this is something that has put a lot of eyes on the Han community in, in a both comedic and fun way. Um, and it, it was just, it was, it was a blast to see that video of how viral it got and see across what pages it went through. And I was like, dude, I know this chick. This is this, this. You guys don't know. This is 
this is only like you're only getting like a preview of what she's like out there like there's way more to that than this this is just like a preview but this is also super hilarious i love it <laughs> that was that was the greatest trailer setup of my life I mean, if i were to see that i'd be like oh, i'm not scared from anymore <laughs> like a hundred percent uh, another thing that I, I I find funny is I I believe from uh, our previous interviews is you do run in a trio uh, with yes. uh, Oingo and Booster. How did the allure of that begin uh, <laughs> to, to where it's gotten now? Uh, well, you know the three of us we're we're just best friends. The three of us we all vibe together and bounce off of each other's energy so well, and we scare so efficiently as a trio it just kind of became a thing where we would refer to each other as siblings and it'd be funny because Oingo and I would clock in around the same time so we would be able to do buffet while Booster clocked in a lot later so at buffet we would like allude to like oh yeah Booster our brother we keep him in a cage (laughs) you're like you what (laughs) Oh, yeah, and then like to escape from tables at buffet. If we had literally had nothing else to talk about, we would talk about Booster and be like, "Oh yeah, we locked him in the cage," and be like, "You locked the cage, right?" Like I thought you locked the cage. It was your turn to lock the cage. <laughs> Just looking at each other, yelling out Booster, and then running away from the table. <laughs> oh man, I mean that was the funniest thing because like you know we 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 know Booster, we know Oingo too good friends of ours and, and whatnot and to hear the stories between you know we've had all three of you now on the show and hear the stories of, of behind you know what went down at, at chicken you know at, at a buffet and 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 all your experiences even from other monsters who uh, had talked about uh, working with you guys i mean it was nothing but, but positive things and they said that you guys brought like a whole nother energy to that place that was always just a fun vibe to, to i mean virus told some highly uh great things about you guys that he liked and stuff. And it was just fun to hear. It's fun to hear that from other people from you guys. And then to hear from your guys' uh, POVs from it. So much fun. I mean, it sounds like you guys had a great time this season working inside the buffet. And the buffet is always one of my favorite things to check out, especially when you have characters and monsters just, you know, yelling things at you. You're just like a kid in a candy shop. And you just can't contain yourself. It's freaking, it's fun. Absolutely. I, I feel like it buffet uh you know it gives you a chance to like give the guests that experience of like yes we are actual people but we are here to scare the ever-living hell out of you yeah uh and like you know Oingo and I we would like grab stuff off the table like trash or forks or like empty plates and like start stacking them on people's heads because <laughs> like you know at buffet like you can get like more personal with the people like i held some person's hand and like paraded them around the entire buffet saying that they were my trophy wife <laughs> like it was amazing and they were totally for it they had a great time That's um, but yeah buffet is a hell of a lot of fun uh i absolutely ro- love running with booster and oingo uh we kind of just got the name three stooges out on carnival like we didn't give it to ourselves just other people referred to us as the three stooges which is awesome because they're such yeah. an iconic trio oh yeah 100 100 percent. i mean and then taking that energy that you guys did in the buffet and then running with it in the streets what was what was the uh the transition of that for you guys like to take a one energy and then just do a whole nother energy out there. Like how was that transition from you guys from buffet to streets? Uh, buffet to streets. It'd be funny because we would, we would tell people who were like absolutely terrified of us. Like right. the, on the verge of tears, we'd be like, Oh, like this is only like level two out there. Yeah. We're a level 10. Like if you can't <laughs> handle us here, you're going to die out there. Like allow me to write your eulogy and dig it <laughs> for you. <laughs> oh man i mean just tanya yeah because i remember virus was telling us about this guy who like accidentally slipped up and said that he was scared of clowns and then he sent you guys just in his their general direction and the guy just took off running from buffet and oh uh, my gosh that that guy like he it was him and his his boyfriend i believe that were sitting at the table and we like virus walked in first yelled oh guess what i have for you and then oingo and i pop out right behind him on either side and he screamed at the top of his lungs 
and <laughs> cowered into his chair, trying to get underneath the table. Like, and we were torturing the heck out of this guy until he literally ran out of chicken, uh, out of uh, the Spurs restaurant. Like, it, oh. it was the best experience we've had at Buffet ever. I would have paid to see that. I mean, I heard that story from Virus, and I was like, only virus can be the one to help set this one up and, and overhear <laughs> things like this to make this an absolute fun time at the buffet. I mean, if I'm if I'm a guest and I look over and I see that, I'm I'm busting up laughing. There's just yeah, no end. I might be choking on food. <laughs> Cause damn. I mean, you I mean, you three already are are uh, a funny trio too. I mean, I, I know how Wango is, I know exactly how a booster is. I've seen you, I've had the pleasure of watching you out there. Um, I'll do your thing, and it's it's hilarious from from going to that deep Beetlejuice like voice to like that high pitch kind of voice. I mean, I don't know how you do it, and, and and I know your voice by weekend one is already gone, but you still you still figure out a way to power through that, and and you still make it sound how you make it sound. Like, what is the biggest for you? The biggest like challenge and the biggest struggle of to try to keep that same tempo of your voice all season long because you do a really good job of that. Thank you. Um. Well, I start prepping to do like, especially the, the beetle juicy kind of gravelly voice. I start prepping to do that. And I start practicing it like two or three months in advance so that my vocal cords can get used to doing that. And then throw in like the switching to the high, like tiny Tina S voice. And mm -hmm. I just, I get so good at it uh, and conditioned by haunt season. I could just flip the, voices on a dime and i don't lose my voice anymore which is nice that's awesome because i remember year one we were talking to you and you just the, or the first year you were out in carnival and we talked to you after and you just had no voice and <laughs> and now you just it seems like you could just you, like you said you can just flip the switch and kind of pre prepare your voice i know people like to drink a lot of uh variations of different liquids and stuff that that helps soothe your throat and you know everything to keep it preserve it for longer i know a lot of musicians tend to do that so mm -hmm. uh no yeah you, you you find a way how to how to balance it perfectly and i don't know how you do it but keep doing it because it's working thank you it is working yeah uh, what would you say the the biggest change is going in uh going while well, you went into your second season of bobbins uh, 2.0 this season um from that first season uh that you started on the carnival uh it was definitely or I, I got to slide more this season, which I was very happy about because uh, last season I had talked about it on the podcast previously. Uh, my, I have like very bad hip problems and like a quarter of the way through the season, my hip gave out oh. uh, because of a, a scare and a slide that I did. So I couldn't slide for the rest of the season. Like I still put my pads on and then like tried to do little itty bitty slides and that sent me to the first aid and I had to stay there for like two or three hours while my hip like did its thing. And then, you know, I still went back out on the streets, but I just, I couldn't slide anymore. And I was really bummed because it was my very first year sliding in my three years on streets right? Um, or out of my like, you know, five years total at Haunt. Uh, so this year I definitely got to do a lot more sliding and I'm a lot better at it. Uh, I feel like I've, grown a lot more as a scare actor and a slider because I can now just have that in my repertoire. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, especially like at a, an event like Knott's, you got all these amazing different floors to slide on, man. I mean, they, they, they have a lot of, from what I've heard, some are as, as good as, as butter, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's, it's, it's nuts. I mean, to see, uh, you know, this continued event to, uh, grow and 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 the amount of interest of people that want to slide here. I mean, this is the birthplace of sliding right here. So yeah. to kind of get to to slide at a place like Knott's is, is almost an honor of its own. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Which is why I was I was so excited to finally be able to do it this year and hone it and get better at it. Uh, but you know, scaring wise, uh, I tried to be more aggressive this year than I was last year. Uh, and it was funny because I think a lot of clowns were trying to do that as well, because like the hype, like the pep talk that we got was, uh, put the evil back in carnival. Right. And so we're like, fuck yeah, let's do that. And then we did. And we got a note like, uh, towards the end of the season of like, okay, you guys need to tone down the aggression a little bit. Y'all are <laughs> a 
too too much. And it's like, what do you guys want? What do you want? Yeah, what do you want? You want, you want aggression? Do you want, do you want, want like, happy backyard barbecue clowns? Like, what what do you want? Yeah. It's not that simple. Exactly. <laughs> it's never that simple. They never, they never, you know, they want to try one thing. It didn't work out. So they revert back to the old thing, which it works perfectly. I mean, I've always said too, like, there's so many people that are just afraid of clowns that it, it's just one of those things where you can literally just stare at somebody, give them a smile, and they will legit just be terrified to walk even towards you. Oh, absolutely. That, that's one of my favorite things to do is like just stare at somebody for a very uncomfortable amount of time without blinking. I know, especially with your makeup and your and your contacts. I mean, it's just if you just look them dead in the eye, it's just it's one of those things where you're just like, especially if you get them and get you in a creepy stance. I mean, it, it's nuts. I mean, what, what, what was another thing that I love about your character? Obviously, was the makeup. I mean, what was it like for year two this year? Did you have any ideas or did you want to keep the kind of same old look or you kind of was just like whatever the main artist wants to put on me tonight? I just will go out there and display her work. Uh, so our makeup isn't up to us as a monster at all. It's all the makeup artist's decision. Right. And I mean, we, we can suggest stuff, but in the end, it's all up to the makeup artist. Right. And you got that, you had that kind of pretty much that same look from, uh, last year, which, you know, it's, it's a recognizable look and everybody can and knows who you are. And that's, I think that's what makes it. At least easier for me when I'm trying to get footage. I'm like, okay, where's Bob? Is that? I know it's what she looks like. You know what I mean? Um, but I mean, I, I absolutely love the team over there behind uh, some of the makeup too, because like you guys, every single night, um, whether it's different uh, styles, one weekend they feel like trying this, one weekend they try that. No matter what, the makeup team there always kills it. I mean, you guys, you guys must uh, absolutely love sometimes, or even afterwards when you guys see it, and all of a sudden done that opening night, you're just kind of blown away by yourself with the way it looks, right? I mean, that thing, I mean, it takes a little bit of time, but when it's done, it looks good. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of the, the makeup artists put in a lot of work to make us look absolutely amazing. And, you know, they only have like maybe maximum 20 minutes to make these looks possible. Yeah. Which is like crazy if you look at some of the other makeup looks that are around the entire park. Like some some of the things in Ghost Town are like that must have taken forever, but it only takes like maximum twenty minutes. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, now looking forward uh, into your future as far as your haunt career goes. Uh, with a lot of exciting things happening at Knott's next year, uh, the biggest obviously being the 50th anniversary and stuff. Uh, is there anywhere, I know that you've been uh, at a few different places in the past and you've left uh, some great characters there, um, some memorable ones at that too. Uh, is there anywhere else that you would like to have a little experience in or, or try to go uh, hang out and play with at night uh, for a season, like Goring 20s, uh, the new zone coming, which we don't know what it is, but um, or go back to like Ghost Town again, and or Forsaken Lake. Is there anywhere else, or have you found like a nice little home for now in Carnival? Uh, I think that Carnival will be my forever home, but I think uh, definitely for the fiftieth, I want to stay in Carnival uh, if they will have me. You know, not up to me. Right. Uh, I'm going to do my best to stay in Carnival for the fiftieth, but I think after the fiftieth, I do still want to try and finish my uh around the world and you know the only places that i really have left are cs and goring 20s right i um, mean i can see you so i can see you sorry i can see you playing something really good in, in goring 20s like <laughs> easily that, i mean i think that would fit you perfect too yeah. it's just it's all a matter of what calls me when and where i think because I know that a lot of uh, monsters and veterans are leaving after the 50th, which kind of sucks. Like all of the older vets. Right. Uh, I'm going to miss them. But that means that there's going to be a lot of open spots after the 50th, like everywhere. Yeah, definitely be a good time to to see what your options are, too. I mean, I, I mean, not got, got to say, though, I mean, I, I do love the current carnival incarnation right now. This is one <laughs> of my favorites. It's been a, it's been a joy to look at. It's been 
it's been a fun time to just watch you do your thing out there. I mean, we've seen some iconic stuff. I've seen you do some iconic stuff. I mean, the world's seen you do some iconic stuff as of late. And uh, so you have that rep- representation of of Knott's too. That's, that's really cool because like Knott's for me is like, in my opinion, the greatest haunt to ever be built and done. I mean, it's the OG. It's the one that started it all. And it's got a soft spot for me and Sammy um, big time for sure. So to, to, to be part of that legacy, that must be, for you, that must be huge too, especially going into the 50th. This is going to be a big year for a lot of people for the event alone and, and to hopefully be a part of that and to be part of its legacy. I mean, big round of applause to you for starters, but I mean, that that must be awesome. I mean, and just to be as a guest to, to kind of witness all this is just is mind blowing. But I don't, I can only imagine what it's like leaving your mark there uh, and adding to the legacy that is not Scary Farm. Yeah, it's it's absolutely amazing. And like, uh, you know, I after, after the 50th, I do think I am going to leave Carnival. Uh, but I'm not going to say where I want to go. We got secrets. We got secrets. We got a whole like two years secrets. before that even goes. So <laughs> keeping my secrets. She got her MCU plan ready to go. <laughs> she's got she's in phase back. three currently. Wait phase till three. phase four. Wait till phase four. Yep. It's gonna be a banger. It's certified banger. Right. But to to be a part of like the legacy that is not Scary Farm is honestly so awesome. And I'm very glad that I found the haunt and have grown and become such a big part of it uh both just like personally I fucking love it and I've made friendships and relationships that are gonna last forever uh out of every all the scare monsters that are there with me yeah Um, and yeah it's just it's great seeing everybody every year, seeing what everybody else does different, like what new characters come, what characters leave, like sadly, but it's, it's nice to see everybody every single year. It's like a giant yeah. family reunion. <laughs> oh yeah. hundred percent. And I think it even goes for us too. Cause it's like, we see a lot, we'll see a lot of people that will go show up to the park that we haven't seen in like since the last convention or something, or, you know, the last thing we did that season that year, um, and, and to show up at the parks and then see everyone that we know, it's like, yeah, it's like a big family or high school reunion, however you want to put it. And it's just a good time. It's vibes and it's, it's positivity and, um, just an all, all around fun time. I mean, I look forward to it every single year. Um, I know it's going to be stressful, but I put that all aside because I know this is the two months of the year that I get to actually enjoy what I really like to enjoy. So, I mean, that's, that's why I love coming back every single year to, to um, keep filming and, and doing all these things. And and I know that's why you guys keep coming back every year because you guys love doing it and you guys love going out there and being with your friends and whatnot, and scaring for a couple of weeks, you know, and then hang it back up and then wait till the next year and pick up right where we left off. You know what I mean? It's just the all journey and what's going to be the next chapter of, of that said life. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I, I have, I have a blast every single year. Yeah, absolutely. Same here. Yeah. It's, it's been, it's been a great season. Um, this is your second time on the podcast, huh? Second time. Yep. Second time. Second time. And uh, how's the, how's the cosplay world going? That's another thing I always like to check up in with you because I know you're really big in the cosplay world as well. You you actually were just at an event this past weekend. How, how was that? And how's it been going since the uh, season has ended now? Uh, it's been going good. Uh, I'm actually working on a cosplay as we speak. <laughs> Look at that um, multitasking. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, as for the convention this past weekend, uh, it was Anime Pasadena, uh, and it was me, my older sibling, Jask, and then, you know, my boyfriend, Andrew Running Bear, that all went, and it was kind of a special convention for my older sibling and I, because our cousin, Chaz, of the Side Project podcast, was hosting the Death Note panel. Oh, nice. There. And we haven't seen our cousin in like 15 years. So it was very, it it was wild being able to see him and watch him do his thing. And then we actually, uh, we we texted him afterwards and he came out, brought us backstage and then did an interview for his podcast, like right there in one of the green rooms. That's cool. 
which was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Well, good for you. I'm glad you're still having a lot of fun doing that and, and getting the experiences that you got to get. I mean, that's awesome. I, I actually did. I, I think you did post a photo on your on your Instagram of that the other day of you getting interviewed backstage. I thought that was really, really cool. Yeah, it was super cool. Awesome. And then uh, my my older sibling and I got to debut two new cosplays that we've both been working on for this convention, uh, both from <clears throat> the uh, anime slash video game Fate Grand Order. Okay. Uh, we were both knights of the round table. I was Mordred and they were Tristan. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It was funny because, uh, you know, we're terrible at time management, the two of us. <laughs> Uh, so morning of like Sunday morning, we were still, we woke up at like 6 AM and we're still working on finishing both of our cosplays. Right. And then got to the convention by like one o'clock because we just, we had so much stuff to finish that we didn't get through, but in all in all, it all turned out absolutely amazing. And I'm very happy with everything that turned out. (laughs) Oh man, I mean, it, it was. It, it looked. It looked like they were. I mean, you do. For those who don't know, and if you if you guys haven't been following their page, um, it was a peppered up cosplays, right? Yes. Uh, that uh, you, the the amount of time and effort that she puts into her cosplays that's really well detailed. I've seen some really uh, awesome uh, cosplays that she's brought into life. Things that I have never even seen before, but through her, I've gotten to experience for the first time, or things that I am familiar with. Uh, that she has brought to life and it's it's really cool to see uh I, I mean that's one of the reasons why i like going to conventions anyway i'll see how creative get people get with their cosplays but to see to have a friend to see her do it and and so live her life through uh her eyes on instagram is just it's incredible to see that and uh look forward to seeing so when's the next what's the next big convention for you because i'll be over at season screamings i don't know if you're going to do anything for season screamings or if you're planning on going to season screamings but that was literally a week or two out, so I understand why if you can't make that one. But uh, what's the next? What's the next thing for you in the cosplay world? Uh, so I am actually I am going to season screamings, but for nice. that only the first day because okay. Comic Con is the same exact weekend. Oh, so, uh, Andrew and I are going to season screamings and LA Comic Con, and we're making new costumes for both of these things. <laughs> a new costume for every single day. Uh, not every single day. I know that um, for season screamings, we're just going to do something simple, but like spooky, festive, like dead children or some shit like that. <laughs> I'm not okay. too sure. I got to talk to him about it. But uh, for LA Comic Con, uh, we're it's going to be one of Andrew's very first like big cosplay conventions. And uh, if you guys remember that old Disney movie, uh, Atlantis the Lost Empire yeah a terribly underrated movie because it's so great uh he's gonna be cosplaying Mole and then I'm gonna be Vinny okay <laughs> there we go uh, yeah so I'm actually working on uh Vinny's like metal chest piece right now <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I mean, you are a very busy person, so we do appreciate the time that you gave us today uh, for this podcast because, uh, like I said, you are huge in the cosplaying community and uh, you are a very important piece of that that puzzle. And uh, to see that you're actually working and talking with us at the time, it's very impressive because um, when I try to multitask, I fail miserably at it. So um, I, I just want to thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, and like I said, you could find her on, on Instagram. Is it is it periods in between each word? Uh, yes, it is. Peppered period up period cosplays. <laughs> there it is right there. Follow her on Instagram. She's got a lot of great um, cosplay stuff up there. Uh, and I know you guys don't have character accounts, but can they find character stuff from Scary Farm up there too or no? Uh, yes, they can. If they want to find everything not Scary Farm related to me, uh, my Instagram is spooky.swerve. At least I think it's a dot. Let me double check. <laughs> is it the spooky with the O with the zero? Uh, no, it's just the regular word spooky.swerve. Okay. okay. Yep. Spooky. And that's all haunt related business. So you can follow both. Yeah, business right there. You can follow her, uh, her cosplay. 
account, follow our haunt account, um, where she posts a lot of more uh, Halloween and, and haunt related things on that account. But uh, Swerve, it's been an absolute pleasure to watch you at another season. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the 50th brings for you. And uh, I can't wait to celebrate it with everyone out there, you in there included. Uh, it's going to be another great year, hopefully, next year. And we're looking forward to it. And we're looking forward to seeing what you bring back onto the streets. I mean, I already know what you're capable of. It's just a matter of what are we going to get this year? Because I'm excited to see what they bring to the table every single year. So I'm excited. Uh, so thank you for everything. Thank you for your time. And, and thank you for your uh, your continued dedication and work to the event to make it one of the best. We really appreciate you. And uh, we look forward to seeing what, we, what happens with you next year. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for having me on the podcast. It's always a pleasure. And I look forward to seeing you guys next year at every spooky event and just, you know, in general. <laughs> We're trying. We're trying our absolute best to, to, to survive right here. Sammy, if nothing else, go ahead and uh, go ahead and outro this. <laughs> It'll be my pleasure. If you, if, you, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and drop a like down below. Go ahead and drop a comment down. Um, if you uh, saw Swerve out there or her character Bobbins and uh, she got you, just you know, leave some positive feedback down in that comment section. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, and in addition, hit that bell notification because I know that we got a couple more bangers left in our Scare Actor Appreciation Month. We are coming towards the end. Um, it's been long, it's been fun, and it's been really fun. So go ahead and hit that bell notification. Uh, we might have a couple more videos to end the year, uh, but then we'll be taking a little hiatus, and then we'll be we'll be back strong as it ever uh, come the new year. Um, in addition, you guys can go check us out on Twitter at Knights of Horror and on Instagram at The Knights of Horror. And last but certainly not least, check us out on TikTok at The Knights of Horror. Um, and uh, we hope you all have a great rest of your year. Peace. Have belated Thanksgiving, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>